at uh, let's look at SPWR. I like that one. Let's look at First Solar. Let's look at Rig. And let's look at AMD. And let's look at US Steel. I like all those. I like all those. So let's first look at uh, SPWR. Now, SPWR is in, in a very sideways neutral channel. Now, the first thing that stands out to me on, on SPWR, and the reason I'm a little hesitant here, and I know I know uh, Bobby loves SPWR, and I know he loves putting it into uh, environmental hedging, I see a tremendous amount of volatility and some lack of consistency. Would you agree, Noah? Oh, yeah. It's, it's definitely I'm not sure whether it's coming or going. Um, they've been losing money on earnings. Now they're back into, you know, profitable on earnings. They've got, you know, gaps here and there, nothing major, but it, it's, it could go either way. Um, and it doesn't have a very strong trend behind it, you know, very sideways, like you say. No. Well, and, and, and sideways aren't, aren't bad, but it's like, it, it, if you look at these ranges, guys, you're talking six to 11, 11 to uh, seven, seven back up to nine. Here's what I know on, on the naked put, and, and, and what we'll see here in a second is kind of why I'm a little hesitant on this one. And the reason is, guys, we're going to sell a delta, and I want everybody to write down the rules on the naked put. We're gonna, and for every strategy out there, guys, you have two rules. You have your time rule and you have your price rule, or you have your delta rule and you have your theta rule, however you want to categorize it. We're going to first sell a naked put with about 30 days of time frame. So everybody type 30 days. You can go up to 45, you can do 28, but somewhere around 30 days of time frame, okay? The second thing we're going to look at is we're going to issue a delta typically between 0 0.10 and 0 0.20. The standard is 0 0.20, but you want to give yourself a little bit of cushion there because, you know, maybe you want to sell at a, at a certain, you know, whole number or certain or a certain, you know, uh, support level or something along those lines. So Noah went out there and he sold one contract on, on, on the stock. And if you'll go, before we go to the analyze tab, if you'll, Kind of show me the trade tab very quickly. Okay, so Noah's going back down to the 31-day contract. And, guys, what you'll see here is, uh, no, you sold the 6.5, right, the point, uh, one, point two zero delta. Yep. So if Noah's going to sell the point two zero delta, ladies and gentlemen, what is the probability that I will get put the stock to me? That I'll have to buy. Yeah, there's a 20% probability that I'll have to put the stock to me. Now, for those of you who don't understand how what we got that, Delta defines the probability of every strike price getting exercised at expiration. So there's a 20% uh, likelihood that that strike price will be hit by exp or will be exercised in 31 days from now. Now, that also means there's a what probability that it won't get exercised. There's an 80%. Now, guys, when you deal with math, I mean, math is universal, and there's no real debate here, but, no, would you agree that not every 80% probability is the exact same probability? Oh, yeah. I mean, the delta is kind of a quick and dirty way of estimating the probability. Yeah. There are other math models to look at that can refine a little bit, but even then, I think that it's just based off of what's the market's opinion, and you have to have a pretty solid understanding of what's the measure of implied volatility and you know what they're pricing into the market. And so I think a real interesting one here that I this is I always love this number over here, Matt, that gives me the you know the give or take of what the market's expecting, plus or minus a dollar uh three on, on yeah. that. And so if it's trading at a buck forty five uh, seven dollars and forty five cents, excuse me, and you know, it could move up or down, give or take a dollar three then 650 is right inside that that probable range um, yeah just being a dollar lower so it's you know it's still i would probably rely i have no hesitation relying on the number but it just has to look right on the chart to me it becomes kind of a visual well, spacing like how much does the stock chart move and how far away is that strike price and how much do i really want to own it and and if you'll go back to the chart real quick now i so the first thing that stood out to me, guys, when I looked at this chart is I basically said, okay, yes, there's an 80% likelihood that, that we won't be put the stock based on, you know, the mathematical algorithm of the Black-Scholes model, which has been defining probability since 1973 and which is the go-to for every single one of us. 
But just just think about this, guys. Just in the last four days, just in the last four days, this stock has moved over that dollar, right? It's moved it's moved past that dollar that it would have to go. So the likelihood that it will be touched at some point over the course of the next, say, 31 days, I would say is somewhere actually around 40 to 45 percent, which throws that off a little bit. And and and. And once again, what I'm looking at here, guys, is I'm looking at something that I want to own, number one, but I'm also looking at something that I can cash flow on as well. Because truth be told, guys, I would rather just cash flow than owning the stock. So this one just kind of stood out to me that it was like just slightly too volatile. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay, so let's move on to the next one here, Noah. Let's look at First Solar here. Okay, now First Solar, strong up trend, showing a little bit of a base here. No, what's your read on uh, First Solar? Exactly that. Just it's a high base and an uptrend with a big bullish engulfing candlestick today. It's moving up while the market moved down. Um, that can be a sign of strength, and I and I wouldn't have a problem. I'd love to be an owner of this at 50 or anywhere in that ballpark. Okay, so let's go. Let's now. So Noah says. I would like to own this stock. It's a strong bullish uptrend. It, it, it's regardless of the market weakness the last couple of days. It showed some strength today. And if it does go down, I wouldn't mind owning that. Now, if, if, if Noah says, guys, if it moves down, I still wouldn't mind owning that. Is that an indication that he would be more than happy to sell put option? Yes. Absolutely. So now the only thing Noah's going to do, guys, is he's going to go to the trade tab first. He's going to point out the delta and, this, and, the, and the expiration date. So we got 31 days for the first week in January. And uh, if we go with the delta of 20, that puts us at about a $55 strike, which is down in that neighborhood. And there's a, there's a big spread here between the bid and the ask. And so we'd be getting somewhere about the mid price between those two. Um, but you know that's a that's a reasonable distance to to the strike price. Yeah. Now let's let's see. Let's go out a little bit more time frame here. Let's switch it from the January strike price, Noah. And let's just go to one of those January monthly ones. Let's see if we can find something with a bitter a little better spread there. So if we did that on that same 20 delta. Okay. Yeah, you got that 20 the 55. So you're still selling the 55. But guys, do you see how the spread's a lot tighter on that twenty on that twenty delta, guys? Yeah. Now it's much better, and the and the reason I want to see if anybody can t can tell me what that reason is. Why is the spread tighter on this one versus the other one? It's not only more volume, it's not only more liquid, but why though? Yeah. Good job, Franco. Everybody say good job, Franco. I like that. Good job, Franco. Okay, it's because we were looking at a weekly versus a monthly. See, that's where your skill set has to adjust a little bit, right? You, When you see a, such a wide bid ass spread like that, and honestly, today was the, 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 the video definition, the video glossary guide we're doing over there at Tackle with our YouTube channel, and eventually we're going to put a whole glossary together at Tackle. It literally was one of the videos I did today was literally on the bid ask spread and why that bid ask spread is so important. You want as tight a spread as possible to for for fill rates and and putting in the mid price and all that jazz. So we're still selling the same 55 strike price. We're just moving out an extra 14 days. Now Noah, let's go ahead and put the process in and show everybody how to actually put this trade on. Okay, looks like we can just click on the bid price. It opens up the ticket. And uh, we can shave that spread up to the mid price here. Um, this is one of my favorite aspects of trading, Matt. The negotiation process is really hard. You just have to identify yeah. the, mid, the mid price yeah. and then ask for that price, um, which you can change it up here. You can use the slider. So, you know, any, either way, you just, you know, set that up, Oop, grab that and slide it. That No, that truly is the greatest thing about trading versus any other asset class out there. That, guys, what you just saw Noah do, for those of you who are new, is you just saw Noah negotiate with the buyer to basically pay him $1.44 instead of $1.28. Now, how awesome is that, everybody? That literally with the slide of a bar, you've negotiated with the buyer of the contract to pay you a little bit more money. 
you gotta love trading, guys. You gotta love trading. It's 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 literally the best asset class out there, no doubt about that. Now, when you sell something, ladies and gentlemen, okay, do you have to show that you have the money to actually buy the instrument? Yes, you do. This is called margin. So you so we call this margin, you can call it collateral, right? Whatever it is. So no one's going to uh, go ahead and put confirm and send. Now, typically speaking guys, and this this does change based on the stock, based on the ETF, you typically have to put up on margin about 10% of the value of the stock. So if Noah's and I say it's about, so if if you if Noah sells the $55 strike, he's got to put up about 10% of the of of the purchase price, which is $596. Now, we put up $596, we're receiving $144. So if you do the math on that, if you look at a calculator, if you take the $144, divide by the investment of capital of $596, that equates to a 24% return on investment. Now, it also has a market-defined 78% probability of cash flowing that 40, uh, that 24% return on investment. Is that a good trade? Number one, just, just in those numbers, is that a good trade? Yes, that is a good trade.